Hello, my name is Kula Kumar Das from IMS and today we will be discussing open policy agent and how to integrate it with Istio for your granular policy enforcement requirements. So we will cover what open policy agent itself is, why you would want to integrate it with Istio and then we will see the authorization setup so that will cover, so that will take some time and then we will move on to the demo. So let's get started. Open Policy Agent is a general purpose policy enforcement agent. It is open source and it uses a language called Rego. Now, if you look at the normal authorization flow, a request will come into a service. The service will send an authorization request and this can be anything, right? But in our case, it will be Open Policy Agent. Open Policy Agent will uh, perform some sort of uh, computation and it will return a allow or deny response. Now this is the normal flow, this is without STO. So we'll be covering how to integrate this with STO so you get a very centralized way of handling things. So because of this, you get a very simple API to offload all of your authorization requirements to Open Policy Agent. And because this Rego language is quite high level, you will also be able to easily write on your policies. Now, why you'd want to integrate it? As I mentioned, you'll get a centralized policy enforcement. So Anywhere you have Istio, you will be able to in, like have your open like your authorization policy set in. Even if it is not part of the mess, you can still make the request. Or if, you, if it is coming through uh, ingress or egress gateway, you will still be able to handle it. But the main feature, the crucial feature, is that the Istio authorization policy it can do some quite a lot of things for you in the authorization phase. So, let's say you want to match on some particular HTTP fields or some JWT fields or you want to do just like basic token validation, uh, HT authorization can do all of that, right? It can also do like source and destination principles and all that. But once you move into the HTTP request body or you want to use some other contextual data, uh, their HT authorization will not help you. It is not supported in that. And on top of that, if you have a very complex uh, set of rules, and then writing that down with HTO authorization policies is going to be quite tedious and open policy agent because it is a high level language, it is closer to your programming language, you'll be able to configure it uh, in a much more simpler fashion. Right? So you can do much more complex uh, policies with open policy agent. And in particular, so this HTTP request body, this will be quite handy if you're working with a GraphQL API or something like that uh, because the GraphQL API, so typically the input for the GraphQL server is in, in JSON format itself and open policy agent, it will take JSON, it will perform some computation and it will return a JSON back. So it will work quite well for that. So let's look at the authorization setup. Now, if you do not mind the performance set or the latency set, you can have open policy agent as a separate service, but to, because we are using it for authorization, I, I went ahead with the, uh, like this uh, sidecar approach. So we'll deploy it as a sidecar alongside HTO or on web proxy and we'll configure it so that whenever a request comes to comes into your uh, proxy, it will first uh, do the authorization with uh, open policy agent and then accordingly it will behave. So in order to configure the injection itself, similar to how we use HTO injection equals enabled in the namespace level in order to track, in order to trigger a, a sidecar injection. Similarly, we'll be setting up our webhook controller, which is this one and it will listen for a particular level. If that level is set to true, then only it will use the, it will call the admission controller, which will have an injection policy. And this injection policy will tell the admission controller how to add the uh, container into the pod. And this is pretty, uh, this is like a, just like a sample implementation tip here. If you are not using the sidecar injection model, then you do not need this. Oh, sorry, I skipped, I think. No, it's fine. Okay. Now coming to the demo, We'll be talking about the, uh, we'll be using the product page itself. So this is the basic book info app. And on top of that, we'll also use the normal Istio gateway. So this is not using the new gateway API. And when we access the gateway API, it, it will obviously take us to the, uh, it, when we access the gateway, sorry, it will obviously take us to product page. Now the product page will obviously have its own container. But alongside that, we are also deploying Istio proxy and OPA Istio. Now we need to configure both of this so that Istio proxy will be able to talk to OPA Istio. And secondly, uh, so OPA Istio itself, we can add some extra configuration with, to it. So that is covered by this one. So that is like your logging and all of the other, other stuff. On top of that, uh, the policy is also required. So whatever Rego policy we give to OPA Istio, so that will be handled for this particular app. 
now moving on to external log tree so for the istio proxy kind of requirements we will have two things one is the service entry so the service entry will allow istio proxy to be able to talk to the local of opa istio and i'll again come to that in the actual demo and there will be also a authorization policy so what the authorization policy will do is it will configure that any request that will coming into this particular application when it is coming into istio proxy it has to communicate with opa istio right so let's move into the demo it will be much more clearer there let me open code okay so what i'm going to do is let us first set up the injection setup so for that you can see so when you go to the open policy agent you will find like a quick start yaml file i have split it up into three so it is much more easier to understand so as you can see we need to add this to our mess config let me uncomment and copy this and then you can do edit config map istio in istio system and we'll add it under the mess so let's make sure everything is tagged properly yep this looks good it looks and yeah see it now that this one is done uh, you can see the three things to keep in mind here so it is setting up an extension provider so let me go back into the thing map yeah so it is setting up an extension provider in the mess config so every pod will every istio config uh, istio proxy will get this so they will be able to talk to this extension provider which will be named opa ext or gpc and the the type of the extension provider is on by ext or gpc so ext or gpc is a particular filter type within non by and which service to use that is this this particular service so the service does not exist that is what the service entry is for and we will be creating this similarly this port is also here so all of these three things the name the service uh, address and the port uh this needs to be correlated with the values in the these two other files right so let's move on to that now uh so everything i want to do i want to do it in the book in one space so let me create that right so the book in one space got created you can see i've added a label here called opa istio injection is enabled so when we set up next we will set up the controller so in the controller so there's quite a bit of stuff here you can see we are using a namespace called opa istio everything is going into that there's a tls certificate for it and all that uh, but primarily so here you can see the config map so this is the injection policy that i was talking about and it is going to inject a particular opa container so here's the container def definition here so you can see it is using open policy agent it is using the latest istio version and uh, the particular you can see the particular port for which the service will be enabled that is not defined here that is defined in the configuration later on and one one thing here the admission controller is itself using open policy agent so this is another use case of open policy agent i am not going to cover it in this video but uh, yeah so once we deploy this there will be this new treating web configuration you can see it is going to call the admission controller in the opa istio namespace and it has given a path so you know that one but you can see the lem the nest was selected so when this the space is there then only it will be uh, injected so let us create that okay now before deploying book it for itself i am going to deploy the rest of the configuration for open policy as it so again this is the open policy related configuration so one is a config map called opa istio config this one is having the plugins so it is saying that uh, you open this ext auth j so ext auth as i mentioned it is a filter in envoy so the implementation of that uh, filter for GR, the crpc service implementation sorry is uh, is to be uh, is to be enabled and open on port 9191 and this path is related to the so like the data that is coming in and out that i'll give one example and there is a decision log that i've set the console logging to true so if you want to check the uh, the request coming in and what's coming out then you can check that as well in the container logs and also that there is another config map called opa policy so this opa policy this is the as you can see this is the rego file 
and this contains the rule set for the the authorization policies that we want to use and it might look a bit strange because uh, this this policy is not written using a lot of keywords uh, but in the newer version of uh, Rigo, you can use keywords so you can so instead of routing so this will look strange right so you're saying default allow equals false so this is pretty simple if you're coming from any programming language background but uh, this looks very strange it's like allow and then there's like a condition or a new block being created but there's two conditions within it. So what this means is allow if both of these are true, right? And it's again, it will take some time to get used to this particular new syntax. Uh, but if you if you switch to the newer version of uh, Rigo, you can use keywords like allow if, for example. And yeah, there's a lot more uh, interesting things going on. So this is setting up like a for all. So you're saying that rows for user will have these Rs and where R is set to this. So what this is, it is going to coming down here and yeah, all of this decision making is going on. But at the, as you can see, there is some bit of code here. And primarily, so this is one thing to check. So, and the other thing is over here, you can see, so we have set up the user roles. So Alice is given the role as guest and Bob is given the role as admin. And guest can perform the get operation on slash product quiz. Admin can perform the get operation on product quiz as well as API products v1. Uh, they will not be able to access anything else. So let us just apply this one. Okay, let me undo everything. Sweet. Okay, now let's apply. Now this will be deployed with the application. Because if you go back to the controller, so when you look at the config map that is being used to deploy, so you can see it is using two volume mods. One is the OPA HTO config and one is the OPA policy that we just deployed into book info. Right. So this will need to be deployed along with the application. Okay, it got done. Now we can do the HTO side of configuration and here let me show this as well before deploying. Oh, wait. Let me deploy everything. Because it will take some time to bring up the pods. So in book info. Uh, and then we need to apply the book info deployment itself, which is in the HTO directory, which I have downloaded elsewhere. So yeah, so samples book info platform and cube, and then book info.yaml. And we want it in the book info namespace. And then we also want to go into the networking and the booking for gateway. So this will set up the gateway and we'll be able to access it through the gateway. Now, let us also apply this before I forget. RC in is not HTO, booking for. Right. Uh, so here's the two things for the HTO side of configuration, as I said. Let me close. So first is the authorized policy. As you can see, the provider is OPA x.gtrpc. This is the same as what we, what we set in the config map that we just edited in the beginning of the demo. So this name has to be same as this one. Yeah, so these two have to be same. You can see uh, we are setting up a rule to not allow access to the health part and all that. That is, you can set it up if you want. One key thing to note here, if you're using an older version of Istio, it will not have the authorization policy V1. So you might want to set it to V1, beta 1 or alpha 1, whichever, whichever is supported. Um, and then in the service entry side, we are setting up this host name. So this host name again, same as this one. We're exposing it into, into the same namespace and the endpoint, you can see the endpoint address is 127.0.0.1. So within a particular, so addresses are in Kubernetes are given to pods and within pods there are multiple containers like HTA proxy is one container within the pod. And so we are saying that in the local host, so within that pod itself, you can access port 9191 as a gRPC uh, for this particular service. And uh, that's what our OPA configuration is also doing. So 
it is opening it on localhost 9191 and that's how this is containing so you need to keep the things in mind that these things are kind of shared or across module files but yeah now that this is deployed okay i think i had deployed it before or something and it deployed let's see Now that everything is done, let me get this to see. Uh, before that, let me check the pods. Let me go pick four. Yeah, everything is running. All good. So let's get this service in HDO system. Okay, this is the address we'll be using. So we can do call. Uh, slash predicates and yeah we're getting 403 forbidden because the you need to access it with the user record so let me open the configuration yeah so you can see here in the lego file uh, alice can access only product base right so let's test that we are using basic http authentication here that is done through this one it should be request error authorization but yeah you can change that if you like. That's you, list, and we'll just give a random password. Yeah, we can see we were able to access it, but it was not able to access the product details because, yeah, it is not able to go through the other app, other uh, things. But if you do the admin one, you'll be able to access the products. Okay, too bad. Copy this. And yeah, Alice will not be able to access this endpoint, but Bob can access it. Yeah, so as you can see, one of these services came up. And if I do the product page one as well, so yeah, that's basically it for this demo. Uh, so as I mentioned previously, OPA can be used in a variety of ways, and let me back to the slide so in this one we saw how to use it for the admission controller but again it's also used for uh, terraform and many other places so if you want us to cover more uh, about the opa and istio integration or authorization policies related stuff then please let us know down in the comments below that's it for this this video thank you